Good morning. Good morning. Well, can you hear me? Yeah. Coming through loud and clear. I know the last Sunday I was here, I think my uh, battery was out. It's obviously been replaced. Uh, good to be back with you after a time away in holidays. Uh, always enjoyable to come back to the family of God called Trinity and gather and worship. Uh, it's holiday long weekend, so many of our brothers and sisters are away, but those who have gathered, I thought, you know let's get together and let's uh, welcome one another. So uh, as you are able, I'm going to invite you to get up, find somebody, and welcome them to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let's welcome one another. Turn this off. Turn this off.
Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I would invite the congregation to be seated and we turn now to our scripture reading for today. We all stand in similar need 
God's grace, forgiveness, and that new spirit, the Holy Spirit, can grow within us wherever you are in your life. I pray that you will turn your heart to God now as we join in Psalm 51. Let us join our voices together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your love and mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty. A sinner, when my mother conceived me, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that get crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and bright spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Here ends the song. Amen. This time, anybody who wants to join me up here at the front, I would invite you to come on down.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your great gift of love for us. It is more than we can understand sometimes, but you pour it into our hearts with the promise that as we share it in this world, we will not have less. We will grow in that love even more. Help us to trust that, and even more than to trust it, help us to do it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us here, guys. Thank you for that. You want to find your way back? Uh, fair enough. Um, there's one, and this is a 
probably one of the better ones that I, I read about. It's, uh, you can eat all you want of the foods that you hate. Think about that for a second. Huh? Foods you absolutely detest, liver, fill up on it, whatever it is. Uh, but here's one of my favorite ones that I came across. It's called the stress diet. Uh, and I'll give you the notes later if you want to do this one. For breakfast, you can eat half a grapefruit, a slice of whole wheat toast without butter or margarine, and a small glass of skim milk. For lunch, four ounces of lean broiled chicken breast, one cup of steamed zucchini, and a glass of herbal tea. Mid-afternoon, you are allowed six wheat-thin crackers with a low-fat cheese, and then for supper, you eat a large pepperoni and mushroom pizza with double cheese, two liters of Coca-Cola, two lo loaves of garlic bread, three Milky Way candy bars, and a full quart of ice cream. <laughs> How's that sound, huh? Yeah, yeah, not too shabby, huh? Well, I think I came up with the perfect solution if you have issues uh, around diet and, and feel like you'd like to lose a little bit of weight. Do you know how much a horse eats in a year? A horse eats approximately eight times its body weight. It's a lot. Human beings, however, eat about 16 times their body weight. So the solution is just eat like a horse. Right? Well, what does this have to do with anything? I don't know. Um, whatever your diet may be, I suspect most of us here in North America will include bread in our meals. Typically, right? How can you go without bread? You can maybe do a couple of meals without it, but sooner or later there's going to be bread on the table. Uh, how are you going to do it? Try and eat a PB and J sandwich without the bread, right? It's just a big sticky mess. Go to a barbecue and, and have a hot dog or a hamburger without the bun. It not work so good, is it? Go to Red Lobster. What do they bring out? Biscuits, right? Go to McDonald's for an egg McMuffin. How are you going to do it without the muffin, right? Bread, it's everywhere. Uh, in fact, in my previous parish, uh, there was an elderly gentleman who said he would rather skip anything for dessert if he could have an extra slice of bread. It just wasn't a meal until you've had the bread. In other cultures, maybe bread is a critical piece, but for some of them it's rice. For some of them, in fact, in Malaysia, yams is a staple. You haven't eaten until you've had yams. Well, for faith, for people of faith, you have not lived until you've had Jesus Christ in your life. That should be a no-brainer to us, right? I hope you know that, certainly. That Jesus is the staple of your life. Jesus is the one thing you need to go to each and every day, no matter what. So where are you at in your life? Uh, are you hungry? Maybe I made you hungry for all this talk about uh, dieting and all this talk about all the different kinds of bread you can have. But what makes you hungry? What creates something in your heart that you feel is lacking? You feel like, I need something. Is it purpose? Do you feel like you've got a good purpose in life? And you get up every morning and you feel like, this is a great, good day. I'm ready to go. I know what I'm doing and I can't wait to get up there and do it. Right? You've, you've heard the old saying, uh, you're either a person who wakes up and says, good morning, Lord. Or you wake up and you say, good Lord, it's morning. And if you're the latter, then you need to come to Jesus Christ again and say, show me. Show me my purpose. Let me dine on you, Lord, so that I have a hunger for what you would have me be about. And that's as a congregation. That's to us as well, right? As Trinity. Uh, I know during the summer, there's a lot of people coming and going, and it's hard for us to kind of think about the fall. But in the fall, it's kind of like we crank it back up again as a congregation, and we start to say, what is our purpose? What is our mission? What is our ministry? What are we about? And uh, I, I'm, I'm really working on that, I think, this summer. I'm trying to. And so if you are developing some of those visions and some of those purposes for us as a congregation, please bring them forward. Talk to me. Talk to a, a council member. Put some of your council members on the spot, right? Uh, have a heart and an openness to uh, your brothers and sisters as they say, maybe this is something that we should be pursuing. Maybe this is something we should be thinking about as a congregation. As we think about buildings, right? Uh, let's not get too caught up in buildings. But rather let Jesus Christ make us living stones built into a purpose and a mission for Him. And man, this world is hungry. I don't know if you spend much time talking to people who are not people of faith. Maybe your circle is tight and all you ever talk to is people who know Jesus Christ and know Him well and closely. But if you start talking to people outside of here, there's people who are living lives that are just empty. They're just filled with nothing. In fact, and I was a little tentative about doing this because I'm going to give you an example from Buddhism. I know we're not Buddhists, and you can come up to me afterwards and say, what are you talking about Buddha from the, from, uh, the uh, pulpit for? But I think 
think there's, there's a symbol in Buddhism that, it, that speaks very deeply to me about what the world is like. Maybe you've read some stuff and you know about this. It's called the hungry ghost. And, and, and they say that there are people in the world who have died, but they don't know they're dead. And so they walk the earth, and in fact, they walk, as they walk the earth, their mouth becomes a big circle, and they spend their entire time trying to suck things in, hoping that they will suck in something that will make them alive again. They don't even know they're dead, but they're just going around inhaling all that they can, hoping that something will bring them back to life. And man, that sounds exactly like our culture. So many people who don't even know that they are dead in sin. They don't even know that their life is empty half the time. And so they're pulling everything that they can into their life and into their circle, hoping that something will finally bring them alive in, in purpose and meaning. We know who that is. The Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the one in whom true life and abundant life alone can be found. That is a wonderful thing to know. And I hope we find ways, and it's challenging, I know it is. Our culture is not receptive to that. Our culture does not want to hear about self-sacrifice, about submitting, first of all, to Jesus Christ before you can enter into that life that he has for us. But we know that the bread of heaven was broken for that purpose. And he went to the cross to overcome the power of sin and all those things that would steal away a life that is real and true. And when we gather here, the bread of life is broken for us again. And the Savior says, come and dine upon me again. And by my spirit, come back to life. Know that you have a purpose in this world and that I will show it to you and continue to help you grow into it. And so I hope today you come hungry. You come to the table where the Savior is both the host and the meal that you receive him afresh and anew in a way that brings you to life, to the life that he alone can give. May God make that so. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come alive as we rise, as we raise our hearts, our voices to God, giving thanks that we are united in his Holy Spirit. Rise with me if you would then, and let us join in our hymn of the day. We are one of the Spirit.
And in this place we join our hearts together using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us join together. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace we have with one another. in the world. 
We especially pray for the ELCIC, a recently come out of national convention. Uh, bless our national bishop, Susan Johnson, and our national church council. Bless Sid Haugen, our synodical bishop, and our synodical council, and bless our congregation, Lord, for all those who hold positions of responsibility. We pray that you would stir up uh, a sense of purpose and mission and, and give us a vision of where you are taking us and help us to follow that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we, we give you thanks for each person who comes into this place, whether they be a visitor or a longtime member. May they find welcome. May they find a place where they are forgiven. May they find a place where they can lay burdens down and know that there is healing for spirit and soul. May we be that place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we also uh, know that there are people in situations that need your touch. Maybe it's us, maybe it's me. Whoever it may be, Lord, we know that we can bring them before you and that you will respond with your grace and your strength. And so hear us now as we bring to you those people and situations that need your touch, both silently and aloud. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to be seated. I'll give just a quick word of instruction as we have some guests with us today. All are welcome at the Lord's table. He is the host and he welcomes all to come to him. Um, if you come up, we will commune this side first. At the first station, you can receive the bread. At the second station will be a tray. And on there, you will find either an empty glass or a pre-poured juice. You can take either one. And then at the third station, if you prefer wine, it will be poured into the empty glass for you. Come, the Lord invites you.
now in the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and as a model of the godly life. And so we ask that you would enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> now, brothers and sisters, I invite you to receive the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless us, keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite the congregation to be seated, and at this time I ask if there are any announcements which need to be raised up for our community. Okay, very good. Take a note. Uh, always a good thing to check the bulletin board. There, uh, there are changes from time to time of upcoming events and various things. Walk of Memories on the 16th. So if you want more information, a poster has been made uh, available on our Nardex bulletin board. Please take note of that. You will see some other things uh, that you should take note of, I think, in our bulletin as well. Uh, collecting some things for the uh, We Care kits. Always can get a good jump on that. Uh, other things, you've got shoe boxes, you've got small clean bottles. Uh, you can come and uh, make those available for uh, soap and things like that from hotels in Saskatoon. Read the bulletin. I'm just giving you the highlights here. Uh, Tally is going to be doing the drop zone and is always uh, prepared to take donations to help uh, raise money as she does that uh, for uh, Camp Easter Seal. A little bit of a different thing. These are ways in which we can give of ourselves in charitable actions. Uh, if you want to go deeper in your spiritual life, uh, a spiritual discipline that we don't do a lot of. Pretty, pretty soon. It's pretty warm out there. We'll get to that warm weather. If you've got it, bring it in. Absolutely. Uh, the spiritual discipline of fasting is one that Lutherans perhaps have not practiced very deeply or strongly. Uh, you have an opportunity here in August to come, uh, and Faith and Ryan will give some instruction and some uh, preparation for the September weekend when we will hold our vote on our uh, decisions around buildings. Uh, and in preparation for that, we want to have discernment. We really want to, to uh, be faithful. And so, in preparation for that, perhaps fasting could be something you can take on, uh, and Faith will help you to learn how to do that. The other one that did make the bulletin, that will be in next week's bulletin, is that we're going to share again in the worship service with Christ Church Anglican on um, August the 23rd. So please make note of that. Uh, I know summer vacation and various things you might not be around until then, so it's going to be at their church. I hope that's the plan, is that we will gather at Christ Church Anglican on the 23rd, usual time. But please take note of that, and you're going to hear more about that as we go through the month of August. All right, enough said. We want to celebrate with those who celebrate. Uh, it's a good reminder to me, today is my anniversary uh, with uh, Heather. However, she's in Ontario doing a spiritual pilgrimage, uh, a walk, and so uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for anniversary. I'll look after the kids, that's what I'll do. Uh, great way to celebrate, it's, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, also, Bob and Bob Row, don't get to go to Ontario this year, went last year, but uh, God bless you guys as you celebrate your anniversary as well. Uh, and Pat Pridham, Miles Carter, and Danny Coleman all celebrate birthdays this week, so let's celebrate together with them. 